Welcome to episode two of the World Record Challenge. If you haven't seen episode one, there's a link in the description, so head down and check that out. I am now in Sydney after spending about three days in Melbourne, meeting my niece for the first time and seeing my sister, which means it was well worth the 10 hour drive. And I'm now waiting for Tweety to pick me up, who's giving me a call actually. So Tweety's gonna collect us. We're gonna drive over to Newcastle and meet Scott. And then from there, we start the long drive over to Perth and then up to the roadhouse. And that's not even the challenge. It's, it's a drive across Australia and that's not even the challenge. That's the start, that's the intro. So stay tuned and see what it's like on the way over. Stop somewhere applicable. <laughs> That's not going. <laughs> the car's ran packed. We haven't got a third person in yet. Or the third motor. Or the third power motor. Wait for the back window to blow out. <laughs> yeah. So we've met the main man, Scott. He's actually the one who's done most of the planning on this. I'd love to take a bit of credit for it, but it's just not the case. He's planned the whole route, planned the stops, planned where we're putting all of the fuel and oil, everything. So he's the main guy behind this whole thing. We've packed everything into the van. We've got three paramotors, two trikes, three wings, all of our spares, all of the oil and jerry cans on top. So that's amazing that it's all fit in there. And tonight we're heading north of Newcastle because Tweety and I have got to do a radio exam before we can fly. We're flying through certain airspaces um, and we need to be able to communicate that. So we're doing that tonight and I better get some sleep on the way because I am absolutely knackered and I can barely function. I uh, just ordered a coffee and actually the lady was laughing at me because of how tired and actually drunk I look as well apparently. So that's the plan. Our first stop is halfway between Sydney and Brisbane. We are seeing a guy called Dave who runs High Adventure Paragliding. It's one of Scott's friends. And he's the guy who's gonna be doing our radio assessment. Look at this coast that they have to fly for their, for their training. It's absolutely beautiful here. Paper. How did you find it? <laughs> Enjoy your little homework there. Absolutely. I loved it without being back at school as fuck. And you swing on the chair. Sweet. No, because I fall off. Yeah. Pull up. Currently at the eastern point of Australia, which is the lighthouse of Byron Bay. And we've only got all of Australia to cross. People do this as a challenge in itself. Wow. <laughs> we've got two beaches to choose from, depending on the weather, which way the wind's coming in. So it's nice to see what area we've got to land in and what our obstacles are. And we're gonna be doing this the whole way. So traveling along, looking at our fuel stop, or a fuel dump, looking at our options to land to make sure we don't have any hiccups on the way back over when we're flying and it's a bit more critical. So how far have we made it across? <laughs> Not very far. <laughs> like a dot. Oh no, that's where we stayed the first night, Glen Innes. Yeah, we're here, Glandra. So we've gone from there to there in three days. And we're still in the same state. <laughs> in a bad state. <laughs> uh, we've only made it into another state this morning after three or four days. Honestly, don't know. And we're now in South Australia. It's getting a bit tedious already. I am not enjoying the car journey as much as I thought I would. 
and we've got about five days left to go. So instead of boring you all with every single update, I'm going to throw together a little montage, a little cinematic montage of our journey with music and drone shots and slow-mo. So enjoy that and I'll speak to you soon. We've made it, we are at the Overlander Roadhouse and the first stage of our adventure is now complete. The drive over, to be honest, was pretty grim and not because of the scenery, but because we spent 12, 13 hours a day driving for eight days straight. And by we, I mean Scott, obviously. Although the drive over was pretty grim, uh, it was well worth it. A lot of the fuel stations has actually closed completely or they didn't have the fuel we need. A lot of the landing options that we thought we could use have now changed and we've got all our fuel caches in. So it should streamline the process quite a lot. Now, Twitty and I have got two days to get everything ready, set up the paramotors while Scott drives back down to Perth and then gets the bus all the way back up. One of the things we've picked up from the drive and I think something we're all concerned about is how few and far between the landings are. When you think of Australia, you think of these dirt roads and wide open spaces, or at least I do, but that's just not the case. There's trees and bushes everywhere, so we need to be really careful while we're flying along. With those landing options in mind, or lack of landing options, we are taking some precautions. So we're using 95 octane minimum for the fuel, 98 wherever we can get it, and we're running that fuel through a filter. We're using the best oil, which is the Motul 800, and all of the engines have less than 10 hours on, so enough to be bedded in. Twitty and I are using the Pliny 202, which has an incredible fuel consumption, but to get that fuel consumption, they need to be incredibly highly tuned. And that highly tuned, as a lot of you may know, means that you really need to pay attention to the engines because if you don't look after them, if you don't monitor them, then they could go bang. So Twitty and I are gonna be using EGTs to monitor the temperature and just checking the engines over, checking the spark plugs whenever we land. And that's it, we are pretty much set up, all ready to go. We're just waiting for Scott to get back from Perth, have a rest day from all that drive-in, and we're good to set off towards Steep Point. In the meantime, by the time this video comes out, we will have messaging live on the live tracking. So you'll be able to message, that'll come through to the inReach wherever we are. The signal around here is pretty few and far between, so I'm not gonna get messages or I'll struggle to reply to any comments on the video or anything like that but the messages on the website and the live tracking will come straight through to the inReach and onto my phone, so go and check that out. We've got 72 fuel stops in total, and there are going to be a lot of obstacles ahead, but that's why nobody has flown across Australia yet. Speaking of, there are currently three people who have just started, and their plan is to pretty much do exactly the same, fly across Australia. And they've also applied for a Guinness World Record, which means we've got a bit of a race on our hands. A friendly race, we're not going to take chances, but we've got a race nonetheless. And there's nothing more for me to say yet, but thank you very much for watching this video. And if you want to see the next one, then hit that subscribe button, click the notifications to get notified whenever I release a video, 
and go check out the website. Everything's in the description, all the images that we'll be posting. Say goodbye, Tweety. Goodbye, Twitter. <laughs> <laughs>